Well, y'all, we're happy to be here on a, yet another average South Carolina day, which of course is a beautiful, glorious day here at the wonderful governor's mansion. We just left the state house, another magnificent building. And we have here assembled magnificent people that reflect the, the spirit of South Carolina. Uh, this is a great state. We have great people. Loving one's neighbor is a, a rule that everybody lives by here. And the, the foster parents and the others that, that care for the young people coming up as well as those who are getting older is a sight to behold in South Carolina. And it just emphasizes how we, this is a state uh, whose people have big hearts and always wanting to do the best they can for everyone in the state. And this is another step in that direction. This is a bill signing ceremony, turning a, a bill into law is Senate Bill 198. And also I'll read a proclamation for Foster Care Awareness Month. But what this bill does, what the new law does is make driver's licenses more accessible to children in foster care. Uh, it used to be that there were only a limited number of people who could sign or vouch for or verify a young person uh, to get a driver's license. But now we, we're changing that to where it expands that definition, that category, so that foster parents and others, others in a guardian situ situation, are able to do that to allow these young people to get their uh, permits and their licenses. We have over 4,000 children in foster care in South Carolina, and about a third of them are teenagers from 15 to 18 years old. Under the previous law, children in foster care were often unable to get their driver's licenses and permits because the only approved adult signees for the application were the parents or the legal guardians. Receiving a driver's license today is very important for a lot of reasons, and this new law will enable that to happen for those young people. Uh, Director Alford is here. She is the uh, Director of the Department of Sur Social Services, and I will ask her now to speak. Director. Thank you, Governor McMaster. In March of 2015, DSS launched the Champions for Children campaign with the goal of recruiting 1,500 foster homes across the state. Since then, hundreds of families have opened their homes to be able to take in foster children and provide a sta stable, loving environment for them. But as of last month, we still need at least 900 foster homes in this state to meet our goal. Meeting our recruitment goal is important, but getting to a metric is not the most important issue in foster care. Even more important than attaining a number is for us to provide normalcy for children when they're in our care. Children come into foster care in a frightening time in their lives. They oftentimes have been abused, neglected, or in some way ex experience trauma that can contribute to all kinds of issues as they go into adulthood. Foster parents give these children the opportunity to experience a loving family setting where they can continue their journey, hopefully to permanency. So it's critical for us to make sure that that setting, that family setting that they're in is as normal as possible, both for the foster parents, but also for these children. And normalcy means some foster parents need to be able to make the everyday decisions that any parent would make for their children. What is normal is for parents to decide where the children can go out on sleepovers, whether or not they can take vacations or field trips, who they can date, where they can work, making choices about their education, and helping them learn the skills that they need to become more independent. When we remove those barriers to normalcy, foster parents are better able to provide the stability and the support that our children need. That's why the passage of S-198 is so important. It ensures that rather than trying to navigate through a maze of paperwork and approvals, foster parents can now sign for children in their care to obtain their driver's uh, permits and licenses as appropriate. In other words, it allows foster parents to exhibit the same reasonable judgment that they would for their own children, and it opens the door for our kids in foster care to be able to experience one of the normal rites of passage that all teenagers have and develop skills critical to their independent, um, their, their thinking skills. Uh, at recently at the South Carolina Foster Parent Association Conference, 
the Foster Parent Association gave a car away to one of the youth in care through its On the Road Again program. The letter of recommendation for the young woman that received that car, Maya, described her as a very positive role model for students. She not only has a part-time job in a pizza restaurant, but she also has been very involved in her church and community and attended college all while riding her bike to school and to her job. And as a result of the fact that she's now received a car and the transportation that she needs to become more independent, she now says that this has made a significant impact on her life. And I'm just gonna quickly read a quote from Maya. She gave us permission to do that today and she's here with us today. My car has changed my life tremendously over the last couple of weeks. I feel a real big relief in my life. No more stressing and worrying. I feel more independent. I don't have to ask for rides. I don't have to get an Uber. I can just get in my car and I feel like I'm more responsible. I have to keep up with maintenance. I have to keep up with car insurance. I loved riding my bike, but at the same time, I knew I needed a car in order to be able to maintain my ability to do what I needed to do. Some days I didn't have a ride and I would have to walk to work. But now I can wake up in the morning, walk out to my beautiful Camry, and feel like I've accomplished my biggest goal of 2017. And I couldn't feel more grateful. My car is a blessing I prayed for, and it was answered. I'm more than grateful, and my life has changed for the better. This inspiring young woman is actually with us today, and we'll be able to honor her in a few minutes. I would like to thank Governor McMaster, Senator Sheely, Representative Thayer, Colonel Schwedo, the DMV, and all others who supported S-198. You've made a tremendous difference in the lives of our honoree here today, but also on the lives of more than 900 teenagers that are aged 15 to 18 in foster care in the state. I would now like to introduce Carl Brown, the Executive Director of the South Carolina Foster Parent Association, who made the gift of Maya's car happen. Carl and his wife Mary not only operate the South Carolina Foster Parent Association, but the Browns have fostered close to 200 children in the last four decades. They have given their time, their love, and their resources to foster children, and they continue to champion foster parents across the state. They define what unconditional love means, and it's an honor to work with both of them. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. What a beautiful day it is. What a great day it is to be a South Carolinian. You know, God has placed no greater calling upon mankind than that of caring for its children. We live in a state that thinks about children. I thank for, for our governor, for our legislature who passed this. All those who worked in the back behind scenes to get it done. We fought for years to try to make our children feel like normal children. This bill will enable us to do that. We thank you for your support. Most importantly, we feel like children in foster care are some of the most powerless of the powerless. And we are grateful for a state that looks at them that way. We've been able to provide more than 120 automobiles to children in foster care the last 10 years. We could not have done it without people who care, who are willing. All these cars are donated to us. We have people who donate their times to repair them and we're able to give those cars currently. We have two more that we're fixing to give away. We've never had a teenager that turns 18 and is going either to school or be independent to leave without an automobile. And what a great thing it is. I thank you for all your support. The people of South Carolina, thank you for those 2,000 first parents that we have. And most importantly, I'm thankful for our children whom we strive each day to see that their needs are met. Without you, it couldn't be done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Brown. And before we, before we have the ceremonial signing of this bill, I would again like to thank all of you for coming and want to welcome all of you who, many of you I suspect have not been to the governor's mansion before. I've discovered there are a lot of people who have not been to the governor's mansion and we want to have them come because after all it is it's your house just like the state house 
and just let us know when you're coming. <laughs> but uh, Peggy and I are delighted to have you here in the governor's mansion. I want to thank Colonel Sweeto again and uh, Senator Sheely, Katrina Sheely is was planning to be here, but is on important business at the State House. And I know that Director Alford, Susan Alford, has uh, all of them have worked hard to understand the need for this new law, this new way of doing business. And now we will now we will sign it. Come around, please. It is official, right. and we'll now go inside. Thank you. This is mine. Okay.